Well, hey, I'm J. Allen Sanford from Rock and Roll Comics. I was real glad to hear that uh, they're making a documentary film about one of my favorite bands, Spirit. So I got it one of my old 89 t-shirts here. I was going to tell you a little bit about the uh, Rock and Roll Comics story that I did on Spirit. Uh, back in 1991, the publisher of Rock and Roll Comics, Todd Lauren, had hired me to write short stories that were backup features for his full-length stories. Uh, he used to do biographies in comic book form of bands like Guns N' Roses and Kiss. You might have heard of us because we got sued by most of those bands. Uh, luckily, one most of those suits prevailed, and uh, we still publish things from time to time to this day. But uh, back in the early 90s, Todd wanted me to do a backup story for a uh, issue he was doing on The Doors. Actually, it was two issues he was doing on The Doors. He needed one backup story for the part one. And uh, since I knew that Spirit is also from L.A., one of L.A.'s other favorite bands, I suggested them as the backup feature. And, uh, even though I don't believe Todd Lauren had ever heard of Spirit, he said okay. And the result was this story I'm going to show you here. We have the original eight pages of art. It was drawn by a Canadian fellow named Blackwell. And there's page one. So what this is is a biography in comic book form. And, uh, I had a whole bunch of articles at the time. There had been a there had been a feature in Goldmine magazine that I used for research, and a lot of fanzines. I'd really been a, a fan of Spirit since back in the late '70s, when I was living in a hotel in downtown San Diego. Uh, one of my fellow hotel dwellers had a whole bunch of Spirit albums. Had the first four albums. And used to lend me those to listen to. I didn't actually. Uh, get to see Spirit for the first time until May 1983. Uh, I went up to the Kobe's Swap Meet in San Diego at the San Diego Sports Arena. And to my amazement, Spirit was performing on the back of a flatbed truck. At one point, Randy actually jumped down and played some lead guitar in the middle of the crowd. Fairly unadvertised gig. I think we might have seen one ad mentioning that this was going to happen in the uh, San Diego Reader where actually I write for now. And um, I don't think anybody else there besides us knew who Spirit was. I found out years later that that was actually the only show that they did in 1983. It was something to do with keeping the uh, the trademark and the copyrights active. They, they went down and did that one gig in San Diego, and I was lucky enough to have kind of stumbled upon it. Uh, didn't actually get to see Spirit again. Uh, well, I saw them a few times, but I didn't actually get to meet them uh, until... They played the La Paloma Theater in Encinitas. It was actually the uh, original, they recorded a live album that you may be familiar with at La Paloma, but they had made an aborted attempt to do that a few months earlier in January of uh, 1993. And uh, the promoter invited me to go backstage and actually meet Randy and Cass and uh, Scott Monahan for the first time. I've been to probably half a dozen spirit shows at that point through the years. Unfortunately, the promoter didn't offer to take me back and introduce me. He just said, they know you're who you are. They know you're going to come. Go on back and, and introduce yourself. And uh, I was aware that they like a little meditative time before shows. And sure enough, when I walk back, uh, we're in a regular dressing room. It's got tables. It's got chairs. But uh, Scott and Cass and, uh, and, and Randy are sitting on the floor cross-legged. And I felt, man, I, I know I've come at the wrong time. But I was already holding my rock and roll comic in my hand, and they all looked up at me very expectantly. <laughs> I said, well, you know, I'm the guy who wrote this uh, comic book story about you, and I was wondering if I could get you guys to autograph it. And Cass picked it up, and he started thumbing through it. And Randy looked over his shoulder and said, well, that's really cool. Uh, where's my check? And, and I don't think he was kidding exactly. And I kind of don't blame him, because you have to remember that rock and roll comics, our subtitle was unauthorized and proud of it. Uh, it wasn't like we were telling sordid stories about the band or anything, but uh, they, they weren't participants in the profits of that comic, certainly. And uh, so I see where Randy was coming from. He, he wasn't kidding, but he wasn't not kidding either. Uh, but he did shake my hand, and he did sign my comic book, as did Cass, as did Scott. And uh, out of all the times I've seen them, I think the most special time, though, is I saw them on one of the few shows they did with the original band Reuniting, they did something like a dozen gigs or so. Uh, that was at the Rodeo in La Jolla in August of 1984. Unfortunately, my common-law wife at the time, Heather, was sick. Uh, and so even though she went with me to be very supportive of me there with me, she wasn't feeling very well. 
and uh, she didn't have as good a time as I did. Uh, but I got to see the original uh, band play a, a really excellent set. I actually taped it. Unfortunately, that tape uh, was damaged, and it, it was good for confirming the set list for Spirit's historian, Bruce, Bruce Pates. But it's not very good to listen to. The tape is defective, and it goes in and out. Uh, it's the only uh, piece of memorabilia I have from that particular gig, other than what's in my memory, which was a really exceptional show with all the original members, and uh, it was a real thrill to be there. And I sure wish my girl Heather had been able to enjoy it as much as I did. I still feel bad that she, she, I dragged her out of the house that night, sick as she was with the flu, I think. Heather, I'm sorry, but uh, boy, that sure was a hell of a show. Well, that's my experience with Spirit, and uh, I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you enjoy the rest of this documentary. Thank you.